Hello, 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 everyone. I am really, really excited about today's guest. And I know that I might have said it in the past. However, this guest is truly special because Adam, who is going to be here today with us, is a true world changer because is his work is the thing that really lights up the world. And for those who don't know him yet, Adam Ra is transformational artist, author, and international speaker showing the world what it looks like when we choose love over the fear in every moment. Adam, the work you are doing, it's truly shaping the world. And I love how much heart you're putting in everything you're doing. So thank you so much for making the time today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate all the kind words. Absolutely. And the thing is that when we are being interviews on a shows, on a podcast, and I know you're also in a film, so the bio can be really long, really deep. <laughs> and what I'm wondering, Adam, what is the one thing that you would love the people to know about you? Imagine, I know right now you're in Florida. Imagine that you're walking on the beach. You're just immersed in your thoughts. It's a beautiful sunny day. And there is a lady walking in front of you, just passing on the beach. And she's like, wow, I just had to stop. I love your energy. Who are you? What is the one thing you want her to know about who you are? That I... I'm on this planet to remind people that they are seen and heard and loved. You know, I, I, when I was looking at your work and when I was reading your post, I was like, where did he, where he has been for the last 20 years of my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I sometimes think that about myself too. I'm like, who is this person right now? Where did, where did he come from? <laughs> That's amazing. And I think that that's really important for people to know because that's the one thing that makes the whole difference. No matter what you are creating in the world, no matter who you are being, that's something that we always crave. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be understood. And we want to be loved. So very often I see in, in my guests and also in my clients that there are such a bright light and they are giving something that they have been craving. So let me ask you, Adam, were you always this loving and, you know, like open heart person or did you go through something that you started to give the world the things that you needed yourself? <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree that people's message for the world and, and, and their purpose is often to share in the healing that that person needed uh, to, to even get there. And that's no different for myself. I feel like uh, in my life, I was emotionally shut down in a lot of ways. Not that I didn't feel, um, but that I didn't allow myself to show it. I didn't allow it to move through my system. And um, for example, I, I didn't cry and shed a tear for like nine years of my life, like intentionally. And um, now, if you've seen my YouTube show, The Art of Choosing Love, uh, I, I cry all the time, it seems like. I, I, I really do. And um, for me, also growing up the way that I did with a, a, a father from the Philippines as my role model, like stoic Asian role model. and um, just the various things that I experienced early on in life, emotion, emotion showing that is, was not the way that I handled anything. I, I didn't think that it was safe to do so. I didn't think that men showed emotion in that way. And so now to be someone who I feel like wears my heart on my sleeve for the most part and is willing to share and talk about things that most people won't, um, it feels like I'm a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Thank you so much for sharing it because very often we model the things that we grow in. And then as we are growing up, we feel that that can't be it. There must be more to life than 
what we are seeing around us. Did you have any situation or moment that really crack your heart open that really you realize that is the thing that is missing in my life yeah honestly my spiritual awakening happened um over the course of a weekend uh through plant medicine with sitting with ayahuasca uh, i had uh never really heard of ayahuasca until only months earlier and i was going through one of the most difficult years of my entire life and I was desperate for something and uh, that led to a series of synchronistic events and I wound up in an ayahuasca circle drinking this this brew from a cup from a shaman and it um, transformed my life for, in, in one weekend I went from being an atheist who who needed hard science didn't believe in in connection in that way felt like he thought like i thought i understood how the world worked and all of these things and uh it blasted me open and the thing is i haven't lost my skepticism if we'll call it that like the the part of me that wants to understand how things work the part of me that needs to understand the logic behind certain things and so what i can say because it is a, a long story but what i can say is that there were enough things that were were quote unquote coincidences synchronicities that piled up in my experience things like communicating with someone and having them tell me what I, I communicated while we were apart, you know, those sorts of things. There were so many of them that happened that eventually it got to the point where the, t the scales tipped. And I thought it was more illogical to think that it was all coincidence than to believe that there was something magical at play. There was some other force unseen that was involved and influencing. And so once my logical mind got on board to it, I said, this is a whole new way of living. This is a whole new way of viewing reality. How do I learn it? Because I'd grown up at the time, I think I was 28 or 29, I'd spent my entire life living one way. Mm -hmm. And to switch, I, I knew I had some catching up to do. And I dove into the subject. I dove into spirituality. I dove into law of attraction. I dove into um, all of these topics that I still study today. And um, it's transformed my life, transformed my life in completely. So how long that I goes it was? That was, two th that was January 2013. So oh. six, and a half, six and a half years ago. Beautiful. And I wonder if you, and, and I bet you do, if you still remember when you were, when you find yourself in this ayahuasca ceremony, did you have any specific intention or you are like, I just need a change? Like, show me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't remember the exact wording of it, but I went into it basically saying, um, I know because I see some of them, I know there are people who are happy. And I hear about this um, concept of like manifestation, like people can create their reality and I'm not happy with my reality. So how do I, how do I create the reality that I want? Mm -hmm. That was, that was my intention was like, how do I create the life that I want? Mm, I love that. And uh, when you change, because I know that this just changes your life, everything you're experiencing and that is in your life, did it also change your business? Absolutely. One, 100%. I, at the time, I wasn't even coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went from, uh, I, at the time that that happened, I was a personal trainer and I had my own personal training business. So I had my own clients um, and I was an aspiring actor at the time, uh, auditions in Los Angeles, all of that. And um, after that, I took matters into my own hands a lot. I, when it, specifically when it came to the acting and the filmmaking, which I still do, um, one big aspect to that was I'm no longer going to wait for someone else to give me a role or a job. I'm going to make my own. And more importantly, I'm only going to make media 
that I feel like is helping to elevate this planet into higher levels of love and consciousness because most of the media that is being produced is not doing that. It's keeping people in fear, it's keeping people in consumerism, and it's keeping people um, from, from recognizing their own empowerment. And so I made those shifts. And when I started making those shifts, I started to create content and as I started to create content, it made me happier. I felt like I was fulfilling a purpose. And as I was becoming happier, people started to ask me questions like, what are you doing? How are you, what's going on? Like you're shifting. You're and all of a sudden now people wanted to coach with me. People wanted to know my secrets. And I hired my own life coach. I dove in so deep and very quickly I went from my, my personal training just a few hours a week kind of thing to a seven figure coaching business in, in, you know, a span of less than five years. Oh my gosh. I love that story because first of all, it gives us this idea and permission not to have to think that it has to take forever, you know, and once you align with who you really are, your purpose and what turns you on, you really become magnetic. And you start to be attracting people, opportunities with ease. So it's really about discovering your own path and really knowing that when you're creating something bigger than yourself, because your work, it's truly like brightening up the world and bringing in the vibration. And when we do that, we always get supported in anything we're doing because it's not just about us. It's not just about building ourselves up. How can we bring other people up with us? Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think that's why, you know, when we talk about the law of attraction, uh, it, it's as simple as like energy attracts like energy. And so it's one of those things where if you're hating your life, if you hate your job, if you're really unhappy, it's going to attract more of that to you. And so many people on this planet are waiting until their circumstances change to then change their emotional experience. But what that does is now put you into a victim role, right? Where things are happening to you. And so you want, yes, this is happening to me and making me sad. I hope that things happen to me to make me happy. And you can't manifest your reality consciously as a creator until you step out of the victimhood and say, I'm creating this, which means I can create something different. I can create my happiness. I can create my abundance. I can create my adventure lifestyle that I want. And I can do that, but it starts internally by shifting how I'm feeling about my life. And that's going to attract in more of the good feeling stuff. And so the, the work is in recognizing that it, it comes from two ends of the spectrum. You get to focus on what you want and what you're grateful for, and you get to remove the pieces, the trauma, the wounding, the limiting beliefs that have been contributing to why you aren't happy in the first place. It's, it's doing both of them. Hmm, I love that. And it's like, I'm here, like for those who are watching the, the video on YouTube, you can see like I'm nodding my head like a crazy. For those who are just listening, I can so deeply resonate with everything you're saying. And the thing, it's really taking 100% responsibility for your life and what is there because if you like it or not, you have created it. And when you take the hundred percent responsibility, okay, right now I'm experiencing something that I don't like, that doesn't feel good. Okay, what do I want? It's looking at the contrast. And you were talking about, Adam, the, the healing, the past wounds. Do you have any techniques or any exercises that help you shift from there to heal it? Yeah, I, there are so many, right? There are countless. I've done... <laughs> I I can't, I honestly couldn't even tell you the amount of things I've done from plant medicines to Reiki to theta healing to sound baths to acupuncture to you know cold plunges like physical things energetic things mental processes NLP like there's so many different things mm -hmm. what I will say is that the most common question I get asked um, ever since my poem went viral, because I, I have that poem, You Are Who You've Been Looking For about self-love. I heard it only a million times, yeah. Yeah, it's been viewed almost 200 million times. And so 
I get messages every day and the most common question is how can I do it? Like what are the actual tools? What are the actions? Like you just asked is the most common question. What are the tools that I can use to love myself more and to, to increase my self-worth? And what I'll say is I wrote a book about this because I got the question so much and it's called treat yourself like someone you love three tools to make self-love easier and it's free. I'm giving it away completely free. It's just pay for the shipping and you can have the book in your hands within a few days. And I break down my three tools, which are meditation, journaling, and physical movement. These are the three tools that are basically the foundation to my self-love practice. And the thing is that most people know about these things. They hear about meditation. They know about uh, journals and journaling, and they, and they are aware of physical movement, like exercise or stretching or whatever. But I wrote this book not to tell you what you already know. I wrote this book to give you a perspective to how to utilize these things in ways that can be beneficial. Because for so many people, for example, they say, I don't meditate because I just don't know how. Here's the, the crazy secret about meditation. You can't do it wrong. So it doesn't, that doesn't even, that doesn't even need to be something that's limiting people. And so that's kind of the perspective. The book is really short. It's really simple and, and easy to understand because I want people to actually do the exercises yes. and we don't need to overcomplicate it. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. And right now it's two to two. I know you're on different time zone, but I just love the alignment. Uh, <laughs> And it's so beautiful because I, I created a, just a free ebook with these three things. And it's called the three things you're not doing that are stopping you from your dream life. And it's and the same three. It's the same three. I have the meditation. I have the journaling. I have the movement. I can send it to you today just so you know. <laughs> that I, and I'm sure like each, each person has a different perspective, but that's something that I wholeheartedly believe. And some of my clients, they're like, well, I cannot meditate. I cannot shut up for my mind. It's not about shutting off your mind. What I believe it's meditation. It's you being with yourself. It's just take, even if it's a couple minutes, take time to check in with yourself, mm -hmm. check in with your breath because people think like, Oh, I cannot be sitting one hour. I can't, you know what I mean? I can, if I want to, I choose not to. But the thing is that people, like you say, overcomplicate, overthink. And with that, what it comes down to it, they don't do it. So I am super grateful. And I know that when we launch this, your book is going to be out because it's going to be out in 10 days. And I am so excited and so grateful for this book because like I said, all the work that you are creating, all the work you're putting out there is what this world really needs for people to go back, find a self-love and live out of the love instead of fear and comparing and judgment and jealousy. And when I first heard your talk about, you know, the one that you've been looking for, wow, all of it was just like so deeply hitting my heart. And I know there are millions of others that it does. And I'm so grateful that you step into your power and that you were questioning your life. Because the thing is, so many people think, oh, good for him, good for her. They, they are having it, they're loving it. I cannot do it because... So if you can, I, I love the example of if, if you can do it, they can do it too. And if they don't know how, guys, girls, follow him because he is the one who can guide you back to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I really believe if I can do it with, with my upbringing and what I've experienced in my path, uh, anyone can. And it's not necessarily going to be easy. It's not necessarily going to be easy, but it's intrinsic. It's inherent. It's, it's necessary for it not to always be easy because the difficulties along the way are the very things that give you the, the knowing that it's ingrained. If it was, it's like the fact that you earned it through, through the choices that you made, instill it deep down in your body, in your cells as a knowing, and it becomes an embodiment and 
only when it is truly embodied does it become something that we can rely on and and feel like we've really changed and turned the corner. I love that because sometimes, and I know that Jim Rohn, he said it, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. And that's what happens when there are times that we're going through our lives that don't feel easy. That's what really builds your characters. That's what really helps you to a better choices. And I love this so much. So I can wait to get your book and I will make sure that once it's out, we will also put it in the show notes. Let me ask you one last question, Adam. For someone who is still in the darkness, for someone who still doesn't see their worth, what is the one thing you want them to know? That they are seen, they are heard, and they are loved. It's it's really that simple. And the, when someone's in that darkest place, that place is almost always accompanied by isolation and feelings of separatism. And I, the reason why I share as authentically as I do and vulnerably as I do through my podcast, The Deep Dive, or my YouTube show, or my Instagram, like whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm sharing it as vulnerably as I can because I know that people are looking up to me. I know that people are listening to what I have to say. And I want them to understand that the people that they look up to are also going through things like that. I opened up recently and spoke about my battles with depression. And that's important because there are people who have depression right now who think that because they are depressed, because they can't see the light, that they're not worthy of the life that they really desire. And I want them to understand that, that their perceived flaws or the things that are really hard and the shadows that they're dealing with do not disqualify them from living the life that they want to live. In fact, if they're calling that life in and they're dealing with those things, then it's actually a necessity for them to be going through that to ultimately arrive where they want to arrive. Mm, that's beautiful. And I really love how raw and open you are and really sharing what's going on in your life because the people can really relate to you. They can really feel your honesty and your intentions. So I really appreciate your work and everything you're doing, Adam. Thank and you. Um, I know that you're everywhere, but where is your favorite place online where you like <laughs> hanging out with people? I know you're like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of online real estate out there. I mean, the hub, the hub is adamroa.com, A-D-A-M-R-O-A.com. Uh, first access to things like my book or my upcoming album, which I'm going to release in early December, those things go to my email list. So get on that email list. I only send out two emails a month. Uh, so it's not, it's not like one of those everyday side of things. And then I would say Facebook and Instagram, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, actually, those are, those are the places. If you want like my day to day activities, Instagram at Adam.roa, you'll get like the behind the scenes me. And if you want, um, you know, the, the big, well-written, longer posts and things. Facebook is that. And uh, then YouTube are, are like my cinematic videos and performances. So it depends on what people are into. You see oh, I forgot one. I forgot one. The podcast. The oh, Deep podcast. Dive. <laughs> Deep Dive with Adam Roa is my podcast. I've had that running now. We're approaching probably three years. Um, wow. Yeah. And I've had some incredible guests on it. I do two a week, one with a guest, one just by myself. And um, yeah, the, those are, those are a place where I really get to unpack like the, the topics that I'm talking about on social media that you can't just, you know, you might be able to post about something and a little bit about it, but on the podcast, I can really unravel it and go deep. That's what I love when I heard the name of your podcast. I was like, of course, of course he has to go deep. And that's the truth. Like on Instagram or Facebook, you can show your face, you can show who you are, but to really get into people's head and share who you really are, podcast is the best thing. Yeah. Podcasts. I love podcasts. I listen to them all the time and, and I'm so grateful. It mine's an act of love really. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Adam. I really appreciate you and everything you're doing. And I'm in the line for your book. <laughs> yeah, awesome. There's at least one person then. 
<laughs> you know, it's going to be millions. That's why I'm like, I got to stay in the line like right now so I can get mine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate thank it. You. And I appreciate the time and I appreciate everyone who took the time out of their day to listen to this. Thank you.